I am currently speaking to you through a liquid mirror telescope. Welcome. I'm going to talk to you about a liquid mirror telescope today. While conventional telescopes use solid spherical mirrors, which are costly to produce and difficult to machine, we are spinning some liquid metal to make a perfect mirror surface. When we spin a liquid at a constant angular velocity, the surface of the liquid becomes a perfect parabola, which turns out to be the shape of a perfectly magnifying mirror. A parabolic surface reflects all the rays coming towards it um, and collects them at one point, which is called the focal point. Um, the focal length of a mirror is the length between the focal point and the base of that mirror. The focal length of the mirror and the rotational speed are linked by this simple equation, where f is the focal length, g is the strength of gravity on Earth, and omega is the rotational speed. For this project, we took inspiration from a YouTube video, and after researching for a while, we realized only a handful of these telescopes exist in the world. However, all of those telescopes use mercury, which is toxic, so we had to look for other alternatives. Our second alternative is gallium. Gallium has a relatively low melting point, but under standard room temperature and pressure conditions, it is still solid. Which means our final option was galvanstan. Galvanstan is an alloy of gallium, indium, and tin, there's a melting point of negative 19 degrees Celsius, which means it's perfectly liquid with the standard temperature conditions. Gallenstein proved to have two main challenges. The first challenge is that Gallenstein forms a layer of gallium, so it renders the imaging object as useless. In order to counteract that, we had to add a solution of weak hydrochloric acid, and that essentially reduces the gallium oxide and allows the surface to be shiny. However, by adding more HCl, it essentially purifies the gallium, which means the surface tension increases. The oxide layer proved to be a solution of the high surface tension of the gallium slide, which meant we had to find a perfect balance between adding HCO and the dullness of the image. Before each use, we had to clean the surface of the gallium stem and then add new HCO. Having settled on gallium stem as our liquid metal of choice, we now had to design a turntable around this to form the primary mirror of our telescope. So we started with version 1, which was inspired by record players. It features a simple single disc design, extra bearings to ensure the rigidity of the structure. Except at this point, we weren't quite sure how we were going to drive the system, so we had to advance to a new version, version 2, which included a motor housing. So we were thinking here that we could drive the disc using a simple belt system. So this should fulfill all our requirements for driving the liquid metal at a constant rate. Except we were worried, because these two are connected by the same piece of material. So any vibration from the motor could permeate through the base and cause ripples in the surface of the metal and render our telescope useless. So, to solve this potential vibration problem, we had to advance to a new version, our final version of the design, version number three, where we split the base into two parts. Now, the motor housing is completely separate from the main turntable itself. It's still driven using the simple belt design, but we've included two extra pillars with bearings on the top, which guide the belt and prevent it from wobbling further. And that means that we can eradicate all vibrations native to the motor before they have a chance to reach the surface of the metal. And that should, in theory, mean we can get a perfect, clear, crisp image. As a final safety measure, to ensure that no vibrations from the motor could possibly reach the surface of the liquid, we designed a rubber suspension system. In the motor housing, we used two O-rings that clasp the motor inside of the hull so that it never touches the sides. And this means that even though the motor is moving, it never vibrates the walls of the motor housing. And that means that no vibrations can possibly reach the surface of the liquid. Being able to effectively characterize our mirror was our main initial objective. 
Firstly, we sought to understand how well a spinning liquid models a problem. To do this, we fit the curvature of spinning water to a quadratic, and we obtained a coefficient of determination of 0.995, suggesting that spinning liquid models a parabola extremely well. Next, we try to understand the relationship between our driving voltage and the rotational speed of our liquid. We use a light gate to measure the time period of our spinning disk and use this to find the rotational rate of our spinning liquid. After plotting the rotations per minute against voltage, we found a very strong linear relationship with an R-squared value of 0.997. The most important relationship that we tried to characterize was that between our voltage and our focal length. This helped us to understand and analyze our mirror's most unique property, its ability to change focal length. To do this, we set up an experimental setup with two differently colored lasers, both beaming vertically down onto our spinning gallon stand. Due to the parabolic and reflective nature of our liquid, both uh, rays from the lasers reflected inwards. The point at which the lasers met was then determined to be our focal point. However, when we first started taking data, we noticed a large discrepancy between our empirical values and the relationship that we were able to derive at the beginning of the project. When we looked for the error within our apparatus, we found it was actually within the calibration of our apparatus. Our lasers were not paraxial. This meant that the lasers were not pointing vertically down at the gallon stand itself and were actually coming off in an angle. This created a discrepancy with the theoretical values as all of the theoretical equations use paraxial approximations and assumptions. Thus, once we perfectly calibrated our apparatus, we were able to retake the data values and we found that all our empirical values and the theoretical values perfectly matched up. We then used the uncertainty in our ability to calibrate the paraxiality of our lasers combined with our measurement uncertainties to therefore find our final error bars, of which the entire theoretical relationship lay within. The final experiment that we conducted was to compare our liquid mirror with a spherical mirror. To do this, we traversed both mirrors with paraxial rays and traced all of the rays to find the focal point. As you can see from this diagram, with the parabolic mirror you would expect all the rays to collect at a single point, while with a spherical mirror you would expect as the radius increases for the spherical aberrations to come into play and for there to be an uncertainty in where the focal point actually is. When we did our experiment, we found that the uncertainty focal point area was actually extremely similar for both mirrors, and that this liquid mirror actually had an uncertainty area 1.08 times that of the spherical mirror. However, we would expect this for extremely small radii, as the mirror that we have is limited by the amount of gallon stand we have. However, if we were to upscale our mirror to a much bigger telescopic mirror, then we would expect that ours would become much more precise than the spherical mirror. While we are able to achieve all of our initial goals, challenges still lay ahead in the completion of our final telescope. Even after all the mitigation that we did to ensure that none of the vibration from the motor would reach the surface of the gallon stand, we realized that even in our final completed telescope, our final image was still shaky. And that was because of an oversight on the bearings that we had bought. We outsourced these bearings from a turntable company, but we realized when we analyzed them that they had excessive lateral play, and that was causing surface vibration in the gallon stand, and that was what was resulting in a shaky image. So to fix this, we filled the bearing with lubricant, and that meant that our final image came out nice and crisp, just as we had dreamt of.